Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Black Magic's Bob Cornelia. Hello, Bob. Hello, Randy. It's good to see you again. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you as always, virtually or otherwise. Absolutely. Well, today we're here to talk about Resolve 17.4. So this was introduced in October and its purpose is to, um, it's optimized for the new Max. So why don't you talk about how it's optimized and how workflows can change based on this optimization? Sure. So obviously, uh, Macs are very prevalent in the uh, post-production world, production and post-production world, uh, you know, more so than even, you know, st st static accounting or something like that. Uh, and so we worked closely with Apple ahead of the launch to be able to optimize um, Resolve to work on the iMac, to, or on any of the new M1 chip uh, based computers and the speed increases have been phenomenal and so we made sure that uh, we had all of the tools working because we have two you know editing pages the color page the fusion visual effects the fairlight audio all of those are there so you want to make sure that the new uh, chips are you know we're taking advantage of the speed of the new chips and we have and that's why we we've done those updates and we've done updates to other products across the line for people that were using them with other uh, software like our ATEM television you know, line or ATEM switcher line. Uh, so we, we've had to do some updates across uh, the product line. But again, uh, this new, I can't wait to get mine. I'm supposed to get one uh, to test the new speed because I think it's going to be incredible. So can you talk a bit about how this affects 8K workflows in post? So what, what you have now is the ability to work um, faster with the base hardware. But now specifically with Blackmagic, you know, we have up to 12K uh, images from our Ursa Mini Pro 12K, right? Uh, Blackmagic RAW, which is our uh, codec, uh, is, speeds up the use of it with, these, with the new M1 chips. And, you know, we've really sort of um, honed in on the ability to make sure that everything is working uh, at a at a great rate of speed, but also getting the quality. You know, one of the things about all of the post interaction, especially now that through the pandemic, with people sharing files back and forth, uh, your storage is really could be the bottleneck, right? Um, but uh, with some optimizations that we're doing and working with some cloud services and things like that, we're trying to speed that process up. So then, on the other side of it, you don't want render speeds to be slow. Uh, to slow things down, and these new M1 chips uh, actually accelerate all of that. So we're really excited to see what, what 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 we have going forward. Well, you mentioned 12K and your 12K camera, and also Blackmagic RAW. So how does how does this new update affect working with RAW, your RAW, and and 12K images? Uh, that was one of the things that we really were interested in seeing how the new M1 chip would help accelerate that workflow, and it has. And so now we've had to make sure that our Blackmagic RAW files are being optimized in the workflow on the new chips, and, and we've done that successfully as well. Um, Apple was gracious enough to actually bring on one of our engineers to discuss that during their launch, and um, you know it really does show sort of the 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 symbiotic relationship between the two companies, but also the fact that, you know, we're deeply embedded in the imaging world. I mean, you know, post-production, you know, it's funny because broadcasting is a term we used to use for just a, an elite amount, but now everybody is a broadcaster. Um, everybody's doing content. So it's all about content. And uh, fortunately with the, you know, one of the results of the pandemic was a lot of people were home and a lot of people had some time to play around with Resolve. And as they got new computers, the last thing you want them to do is not to be able to use it as efficiently as they had. And what you're really hoping for is the speed up. And that's what, you know, we, we keep coming out with new versions that increase the speed at which you work to the point now that even if you have 12K images on your laptop, you're still able to play them back and, and work with that. That's a combination of the better speed of the, of the processing but also the way that Blackmagic RAW is optimized to in that workflow so that you only need the one file. You don't need to make proxies. You're working on both the proxy and the final image at the same time because of being able to put on a lookup table and then later going back to RAW uh, for color. And then when you do your final color grading, 
you only have to send the file to the editor. You don't have to uh, do a reconform. It's it's just an update. So you also so talking about remote workflows, which obviously the last two years it's it's it is top of mind. Uh, part of this update is Dropbox Relay integration. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so what we did was we've been working with them for a while. Uh, we realized that a lot of people share projects uh, through Dropbox. So people will just shove uh, images up there, you know, files and people pull them down and whatnot. This is uh, a way to actually have a little bit better interaction for approvals. So this way people can just go up and, and view the, uh, you know, the approval process of whatever it is, whether it's commercial or feature, you know, a select take or that, that kind of thing. So yeah, we, we, we've worked with them to try and improve that process. So it's not just pulling files up and down. There's actually a little bit of interaction that you can do in Dropbox to be able to view those images. And that's something that people have been looking for. Uh, I personally use Dropbox with my daughter. We do some videos and we both have a copy of the main files, but when uh, she wants me to tweak an edit or tweak the, uh, the chroma key or something like that, uh, she'll send the DRP, which is the DaVinci Resolve project file, which is a very small file. She'll throw it up on Dropbox. I'll pull it down, I'll tweak, I'll uh, load, upload my version of it. She pulls that down and she tries it out. But the interesting thing is she uses the free version because I'm cheap. Not really. Uh, and I use the full version, but we can still interact. And that part is really cool. So that has helped a lot of people because it doesn't matter what version they have, they can still uh, collaborate. And um, whether they have the Resolve Studio or they have the, the free version, which is available online. So Resolve is more than just a color grading system these days. There's so many other products that go into it. What, um, what updates are in this latest update that you could talk about in terms of audio post and, and also VFX? Sure. So recently we've we've done some updates uh, for Fusion. I mean, sorry, for well, for Fusion and for Fairlight, but Fairlight is the one I was trying to go to. So Fairlight actually now has the, you know, the Dolby Atmos uh, certification. So you can do your, your Dolby uh, finishing in, um, in Fairlight. Um, matter of fact, we just did a release today of a, a huge install in France uh, for the French TV network. Uh, they just put in 31 Fairlight systems across 24 of their uh, regional uh, TV stations and have uh, you know, basically just moved over to Fairlight in Resolve. Um, so, and that adoption is, is starting to grow more and more. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to show the actual Fairlight panels in person as much as we would like because of the pandemic. That's that's one product that's been difficult to show in person. But as we get uh, going, moving forward with that, I think, and with some of these larger customers that are basically saying we're we've moved to this workflow. Now the beauty of all of that is that if they're doing the color grading already in DaVinci Resolve and you know, and they're doing the audio now in the Fairlight version of Resolve, then the move to editing makes sense, right? So people don't change platforms unless there's a reason for it. And during the pandemic's another one where people were getting more uh, exposure to using the cut page or the edit page or even fusion visual effects. Uh, you know, we added um, open VFX, you know, a while back. So people have been playing with those tools in any of the, of the tabs, if you will. So I think that really has gotten people to get more exposure to it. Uh, when you buy a camera, uh, any of the cinema cameras, you get a copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So that also has led people to trying it out more. And uh, all of these things, and then of course, you know, if they get a new laptop uh, with the new Apple laptop, then they're going to want to try it too. So a lot of that has accelerated the use of the product overall. And we've done what we could. And we've even lowered the price of some of the hardware that goes along with it. So the uh, mini panel and the, um, the micro uh, control panel for uh, the color grading. And uh, you know we have the editor's keyboard and of course the speed editor, which we launched during the pandemic. So those being a little bit uh, more price effective has helped because people are now working sort of in two places at once. Uh, you know, they, some that are going back into the main studio are still working from home when they can. And so sometimes they have a, a mini panel at home and have the advanced panels uh, in the office. And so we're seeing a lot more of that. 